Good morning. David looked at me like I was crazy. All right, I'm going to ask everybody to stand up with us this morning. Yeah. And I'm going to ask Zachary to open us oh, up in well, a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this wonderful day, despite the heavy weather that well, we're able to be in your house and worship you, Lord. And I just pray you be with those who may be without power or their yard and house may still be a wreck, Lord. And I just pray that you give them peace and whatever they need in you, Lord. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. So I always try to pick out songs on Wednesday. And so I was able to do that. And then this morning we were up here practicing. And our first song is called Raise a Hallelujah. In the chorus it says, I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. And at that time I didn't know... I mean, I knew we were going to have some bad weather, but I didn't know the storm. So who was singing in the storms? Anybody? I was because I was in my car driving because Peyton's daddy wanted to meet right in the middle of the storm. So I was out driving, but I was singing. Was anybody else singing? Okay, how about singing afterwards? Because we are still alive, and even if you all had damage, praise God, we did not. But if you all did, you're still here and God is going to be with you no matter what kind of damage you received, and he's going to help you get through it. So we are going to raise the hallelujah this morning.
give it up for our dancers down here. You all need to learn to dance like these girls down here. All right, during this next song, go around and welcome somebody here this morning.
children's time. All the rest of the children, come on up here. Good morning. Yay. Yay? What's yay? <laughs> good morning. How are you guys? Are you all good? Well, I've got no. Well, I hope you get better. I got something this morning. I bet you all will know where these came from. I got sticks in my bag this morning. Where do you think these came from? Outside a tree. Yeah, we had some pretty strong winds Friday, didn't we? We did, and it blew sticks everywhere. We've got sticks in our yard. I went to my parents' house yesterday. Guess what we did? Picked up sticks. Yes. Sticks and sticks and sticks. So, that storm Friday, does anybody have their electricity out? Oh, is it still out? Your pole broke? Our electricity went out for a little while. Did yours go out for a little while? It came on last night. Yours went out. Is it back on? It is? That's good. Uh, there are some people still that don't have electricity right now because that was a that was a pretty big storm. He doesn't. Wow. Yeah, a lot of people still don't have electricity. That was a, that was a pretty bad storm, wasn't it? How many of you all got to stay home from school because it was such a bad storm? Yeah, we got to stay home from school. We did, yep. I got to go home early from work that day. And when we got home, Lincoln and I went outside, because it wasn't quite stormy yet. Lincoln and I went outside, and we, we tried to, like, lay down all of our chairs that might blow off, and we moved our trash cans, because we knew that there was going to be a really bad storm. Was anybody a little afraid during the storm? Yeah, yeah, I was definitely a little bit concerned. The wind would blow, and I could hear my roof kind of making this noise like the wind was getting a hold of it a little bit. It blew some shingles off my roof. In fact, well, we're probably going to have to get a new roof. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. so it was, it, was a, it was a pretty bad storm. So this morning, I'm going to tell you all a story about a time in the Bible when Jesus was in a storm, and it happens in a boat. So what I want you guys to do is kind of get in front of me right here where Lucia is and Scholar is. Kind of get in front of me down here in the floor like we're in a boat. Yeah, get out here. Get here behind Lincoln. Come on down, Brian. You can sit down here. Come on down. Sit in front of me. All right, we're going to pretend like we are in a boat. So the first thing I'm assuming if Jesus was in a boat they probably had to row the boat. So let's kind of, let's row a little bit, and I'll tell you the story. So Jesus and his disciples, Jesus had been teaching and performing miracles all day. And it was getting kind of late, and he wanted to travel across the Sea of Galilee. So he and his disciples got in a boat, and they started rowing across the Sea of Galilee. So here they are rowing, and Jesus is pretty tired. He's been teaching, he's been preaching, he's been performing miracles. So Jesus lays down and takes a nap. He goes to sleep. Well, as they get out to the Sea of Galilee, <clears throat> a storm comes, and it starts rocking the boat. So everybody do this with me. Rock back and forth. The storm was coming, and then the storm, it gets bigger and bigger and the waves start coming over and crashing into the boat and crashing in this side and remember what's what's Jesus doing napping. Jesus is taking a nap he's asleep during this storm did anybody take a nap during Friday's storm well I took a nap after the storm but 
Not, not during the storm. Some people are getting pointed out. Some people did sleep through the storm. We got some Jesuses in here. Right. <laughs> huh? <laughs> she went on a cruise and you went to sleep? Something like that. All right. So Jesus was asleep and these waves, they are crashing into this boat. And the disciples, they're afraid. They're scared. I mean, boats don't really do good when water gets inside, do they? No, not at all. So the disciples, they're, they're scared. They're upset. The, there's a horrible storm. Waves are getting in. So they go to Jesus, and they, like, shake him, I guess, and wake him up. And they're like, Jesus, if there's a storm, don't you care? Hang on just a second. Yeah. Okay, go to your parents. That's okay. Okay, you go take care of that. They went to Jesus, and they said, Jesus, don't you, we're going to drown. Don't you care that we're going to drown? The storm is coming in. And Jesus, he got up, and he said, peace, be still. And the storm, it was gone. All the waves were gone. The storm was gone. The water was calm. And Jesus looked at his disciples, and he said, Do you not have faith? Do you not know that I'm in control, that I can take care of any storm that comes your way? Now, Jesus was talking, the disciples were thinking about a real storm with, like, waves and rain and that kind of thing. But that's not the only kind of storm that might happen in your life. I mean, we get storms like Friday with wind or tornadoes or thunderstorms. But sometimes the storm in our life is other things. Sicknesses, being without electricity, maybe losing a job, maybe some things that are happening in our life that we might call a storm, something we have to go through. And no matter what the storm is, whether it's a rainstorm or it's a, it's a storm you're growing, going through, Jesus is in control. Jesus says to praise him in the storm. No matter what's going on, praise Jesus. Have faith in him because he controls our lives. He controls everything. So no matter what's going on, we're going to praise Jesus in the storm. And we're going to practice it this morning. I want you guys all to stand up with me. All right. You're going to stand up. And we're going to lift our hands up because we're going to praise Jesus in the storm. And I want you to close your eyes, okay? So we're going to close our eyes. We're going to look up towards the, the ceiling. Look up towards heaven. And I'm, we're going to say praise Jesus you in the storm, okay? Everybody got your hands up? You got your eyes closed? All right, on the count of three. One, two, three. Praise you in the storm. <laughs> I had to add a little bit of water. It was a storm, right? <laughs> all right, guys. You all can sit back down. Let's pray. That was minty. I know. There was a little bit of leftover uh, peppermint oil, I think, in there. Now you are wet and minty fresh. It works. <laughs> All right, let's pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, that we can. We just need to praise you in the storm, Lord. No matter what's going on in our life, no electricity or, or roofs or no jobs or sickness or illness or Whatever is going on, Lord, you're in control, you love us, and you, you, you want what's best for us, that all we have to do is just praise you in the storm, Lord, and you will take care of us. Thank you so much for these children this morning. In your name we pray, amen. Hold up, Zachary. It's the first Sunday of the month. Yeah. Great intro for Miss <laughs> Dad. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm so humbled. <laughs> Good morning, church. You know, my, my grandmother, um, we called her Nanny, Nanny and Paul, and she said uh, that March will come in, March will come in like a lion and go out like a lamb, and it certainly did come in like a lion. And I thought, you know, God is such a God of order that uh, when it goes out like a lamb, we will be celebrating the first of East, uh, April, the sacrifice that the lamb took, our Easter. Uh, God of order. So I'm going to give you an update of where, the children, where we are with the Children's Church. This month we're going to be moving into the book of Joshua. Um, kids are doing great, absolutely. So good. And uh, I'm so proud uh, to see how much they have learned. Um, it gives me hope that the program is, is working uh, with uh, what the Holy Spirit has given us. Um, Starting today after church for just an hour, I'm going to any child that wants to be in our Easter play will remain after church and we'll meet in the front classroom. Uh, we'll do this every Sunday up until um, April the, let's see, I got it in the notes in here somewhere. Um, the first uh, Saturday in April before Easter Sunday, we will be doing a full dress rehearsal and it'll be for maybe an hour hour and a half and it'll be on that Saturday from one o'clock till two so I don't plan on keeping the kids any longer than an hour each Sunday it's um, gonna be a terrific Easter play the kids do a great job so if the kids want to be in the play please meet us in the in the front classroom um, let's see what the kids are going to be learning in the book of Joshua is that in Deuteronomy, they learned about all the laws that God had given Moses. Thank goodness we're not under those laws now. Amen. And, uh, yeah. So they're going to find out in the book of Joshua, even though they went into the land of milk and honey, they still had the desert to go through, too. Doesn't that speak to a lot of us? We have our good days and our bad days. Um, so the tithing, thank you again, parents, for seeing that the children have tithing money. I even had one child that gave a penny, and I thought, how blessed that God must have felt when he saw that child drop that penny in that tithing box. So, it, and it makes, and I'm sure that it makes them feel pretty good, too, to be able to put something in that box uh, on Sundays. So right now, in February, we had $11.75. Uh, for a total uh, to date, uh, $31.86. Okay, I made all these notes because don't I get sidetracked? <laughs> So um, one thing that I wanted to, to show you all um, that Pastor has pulled up. Now, you're not going to be able to read that, obviously, but I thought it was important that you see what our children are writing. And um, back in February, which I didn't get a chance to go over those, um, they were... <laughs> February, they, uh, a child wrote, God really loves us, only sons and daughters, moms and dads. Evil will never win. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another child wrote, Devil, you will never win ever, even win a battle, even when we get off track of God's plans. We'll always be holy and good, not bad. Like the devil and his evil people. <laughs> another child wrote, God is here all the time. Uh, another child wrote, we were chosen to be born with God in our hearts all the time. 
Nope, not the devil. <laughs> God loves you. Um, kids are a child of God. And uh, this uh, last uh, uh, that's up on the board is um, I pray that the let's see, yeah, these are uh, all of these were written by the children that are in the five to nine class. Uh, basically, I just wanted to let you know what's on the kids' hearts. What you know that it is God. I mean, they could have drawn funny pictures and put up anything on that eraser board. But when I saw those each month, when they write those and their tithing cards, what they, how they pray for their families and, and when they've lost animals and, and, and that's a pure, that's a pure heart praying. And it just, it, 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 it blesses me. It, it blesses me to see these, the kids at this age be strong in the Lord because God knows with the way this world is going right now, um, that they know that they've got somebody to go to all the time. So finally, um, once again, um, I need teachers. This past month, uh, this, this month, um, we weren't able to have class on Wednesday night, and we're not going to be able to have class the, follow the last Wednesday night of the month because we got five Wednesdays this month. So, I've got a bunch of young folks in this church, and we've got teachers that have been teaching now for over five years plus. Most of us don't have children of our own here. So, I would want you all to step up and become that teacher. And the thing is, guys, you learn along with the kids. Yes, you know, it, so it's a, it's a blessing. And to be in that class with those kids and watching them make crafts and, and open the Bible and read a scripture, it blesses you. And I make it really simple for you. I tell you what scriptures you have to bring into the classroom on that, that week. It's usually short. You've got the uh, teacher's closet that's full of crafts. It's an easy, easy job. I wish my, our work could be that easy. And, and be blessed as well. So... See me, um, I, I'll go over and tell you what all, how the program is set up, and uh, hopefully I'll get some people to step up and uh, be committed, because I need commitment. This is not, uh, uh, the children are comfortable when they see the same folks over and over again, and, uh, and plus it certainly helps all of us teachers that are teaching now to know that you're committed, and you're going to be teaching that week. We do, uh, we do change occasionally if they've got vacations or sickness, but generally you're put on the calendar, and that's the week you stay on. And if you want just a Wednesday night, you get scheduled only on a Wednesday night, or if you want Sundays only. And, folks, it's only one time a month. One time a month. That's all you would have to, to teach is once a month. So please pray about it. We need you. Step up. Thank you all so much. I love you.
got an old church choir singing in my soul. I've got a sweet salvation, and it's beautiful. I've got an old church choir singing in my soul. I've got a sweet salvation, and it's beautiful. I've got a heart overflowing, cause I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I'm gonna ask the ones that are taking up offering to come on down and I'm gonna ask Lance to lead us in offertory prayer. chain breaker have y'all ever uh, thought how we get chains have you ever thought about it well God's really been showing me um, it's by letting Satan take little things and eat at you every single day and every time you're adding a chain link and that chain is wrapping around you and it's, it's got you stuck it's got you miserable it's got you feeling defeated it could be little things with work it could be little things with your family. It could be your finances. It could be church stuff. It could be whatever. But you let things just start eating at you and bothering you and getting you upset, stressing you out, making you mad and angry and stuff. And God showed me that I have to pick my battles. I have to decide if this stuff is worth being stressed out about, if it's worth being upset and angry and letting it just bring me down. It's better just to say, I don't even care. God's got this. And he's going to come out with the victory anyway, so I'm just going to let it go. And when you let it go and just give it to God, then you don't have the chains anymore. 
those chains can't even start. So I'm just going to ask if you have chains this morning, let it go. Just give it to God because he will break every chain that you have. Morning, family. How we doing? <laughs> Let's see. Why don't we get a uh, PJ? Do you mind to open us up in prayer? Thank you. PJ, come on. 
calling all pastors to the room. <laughs> Let's pray, guys. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everything that you put us through, Father God, so that we can see your glory, Father. We just ask you to bless this service, and we just thank you for blessing the praise and worship team. Father God, we just ask that you just open our eyes, our hearts, and our souls just to receive your word today. And we lift our pastor up to you that he just says nothing but, um, nothing but your word, Father God. We just thank you for the Bible that you've given us, Father God, so we know what to do and when to do it, Father. We just love you and we thank you. And it's in your son's precious name and all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. Hey. I, told, I told Brother PJ, just move on and start preaching. Hallelujah. Say, say, say his name with me, Holy Spirit. He is, he is the giver of all the gifts, amen? And as long as you bless his presence in your life, you will flow and activate every gift of the Lord. I think God deserves some praise on that, amen? At this time, we're going to excuse all of our beloved children and our children's ministers. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. And there goes half the church. That's powerful, amen? I mean, don't you love it? Glory be to God. They're going to have to add on some steps. I mean, th th this is all full. All full when the kids come up. I see that. No pressure, huh? Miss Connie said, I'm watching you. Um, ju uh, just curious, I, I have a baptism schedule for later today, um, a private one. And here in my heart, if you want to be baptized in private, I, can, I completely understand. Just be baptized. Can I hear an amen? Don't prolong it. Hallelujah. Don't, don't make excuses. Amen. Just, just say it with me. Just do it. Amen. And, and I, I just want to know, is there anybody that wants to be baptized during service today? Uh, show of hands. Got Oscar Jr. back there. Hey, what I love about Brad Jr. is that he's, he's just all in all the time. Amen. Uh, our beloved Jen, uh, our elderess, I like to say, or even pastor, because she, she's with Tish now with the youth. She's back there telling Brad Jr., no, you can't do a cartwheel. Boom, boom, boom. He does a cartwheel. <laughs> and I love that he just does it, you know. And um, I act like that at Walmart all the time, and you can ask Trish. No, you can't have that. It's going in the cart anyway. But it changes, though, at, the, at checkout. Ain't that funny? Because she lets me think all throughout the shopping experience that I'm going to get it. And then when it's time to check out, she's like, yeah, put that up. <laughs> Ain't that something? That's, all, that's always the case. Like, I'm like, oh, my goodness, I'm finally going to get it. Yes, yes. And, you know, you try to slide it in under some tortillas or something, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Brother Praise, she's like, you too? <laughs> Look at this. <sister. laughs> This is like, bless them, bless them. Um, it's good to laugh in the house of the Lord, amen? amen? God is head over heels in love with you. Nothing can change that, amen? amen. And, and in this message, um, I, I pray always that Holy Spirit teaches us. Um, once again, uh, for those of you who are new, um, can we see your hands if we have any first-time visitors here? Or is everybody here just uh, okay? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. We're all family in here. Hallelujah. Look at how God is growing our family. Amen. Look at how God is growing our family. So as you know, last Sunday, Holy Spirit taught us as far as the treasures in the jars of clay. And then we, we, we got to see as far as through the, through the books of the Bible that spelled out kimchi. Nobody really appreciated that. Which I thought was pretty awesome. Um, that we are the jars. We now carry the treasure. Amen. 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 And it's beautiful because we are anointed of God. Hallelujah. We, we are saved by his grace and mercy. And what God asks us and has equipped us to do is to let the whole world know the treasure that we have. But the only way that people know the treasure that you have as a jar of his mercy, grace, salvation, goodness, gooder, 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 is only if you overflow. Come on, somebody, right? Can, can I get a hallelujah? You see what I'm saying? Because last time I checked, last time I checked, 
Listen, my beloved family, last time I checked, when it's, when, it's a clay, when it's a clay vessel here, you don't know what's in it. Right? Because you can't see through it. So it has to be overflowing in order for people to see the goodness of our God. Amen? I believe right now that we have too many children of God that are run, running around dry, crunchy. But it doesn't have to be like that anymore, right? Amen? And here in my heart, we don't judge God shows you crunchy people not to say, ooh, you crunchy. Ooh, you crunchy. No, that, you don't do that. You see the crunchiness, and you, you're there to bring laughter. Amen? You're, you're there to say, listen, I know I heard you say all that, but you know what? God loves you. Right? And then here in my heart, some, some of the really extreme, some of the really extreme crunchy tacos, I'll tell you right now, is going to say, how can you say God loves me? And that gives you the opportunity to say, because Jesus left heaven to die for you. Amen. Remember, this is love, right? So the message today, it, 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 was, it, it stemmed from the overflow from past, the past Sunday and throughout the week as far as in, in the ministry and talking to people about God's love and then being reminded that we have everything good inside of us. You see, I pray in Jesus' name that some of you right now, understand that his glory is not to be revealed when we get to heaven. His glory is once revealed when you call on his name. And now you live in that glory. Hallelujah. It's a, say it with me, it's a choice. You see what I'm saying? It's a choice. Here in my heart, I don't watch, I, listen, I'm not, oh God. God help me. Goodness, goodness, goodness. Some of y'all are going to get crunchy when I say this, but Holy Spirit says say it. I don't really follow sports. I don't watch it. Okay? I don't watch UK basketball. Okay? Bel <laughs> beloved, there is a good. <laughs> don't sugarcoat it, my beloved. Don't sugarcoat it. <laughs> he jumped out of his skin. <laughs> now, hear what I'm saying, though. But if you invited me and my beloved... To go to UK, you have to pay. <laughs> I have to speak life. And you say, you know, you're going to go take us out to dinner and everything. Hallelujah, right? But hear my heart. Hear my heart. We go to the game, right? If you're a fan, you're going to be like, oh, my goodness. Did you see? Hey, look. Oh, that was an amazing shot, right? And I confess to you, I'm going to be like, so the blue, the blue, we, we clap for the blue, right? Is that what we're doing here? We're clapping for the blue, right? But let me ask you something. If, if I'm not at your level, will that mess with your experience at the UK game? <laughs> then my church family, my eternal church family, God's holy people, why do we do that at God's house? Listen, if you're at that level where you're just excited and pumped up and everything for the Lord, don't be looking at somebody else because they're not. They're just not there yet. But guess what? It's your job to encourage them, to love them, amen, to show. Don't talk about them, amen. Say it with me. Don't talk about them. So up on the screen, you see a bunch of Tupperware lids, right? <laughs> Earlier this week, I, I was looking for a Tupperware lid. And, man, I was getting so frustrated. Like, 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 I believe with all my heart that the lids is hanging out with the left sock. Somewhere. They're having church somewhere in the house, right? And there's, the, they're like, the lids are saying, repent. And then the left sock's like, I will. You repent, too. You know, and, and they're, like, they're, like, worshiping, you know. And I don't know what's going on. But I needed a lid because I had to cover up some raw meat that I didn't want to spoil. And I'm not going to get really into that, even though I am kind of getting into that. And the point is, is that I couldn't find the lid, so I just have a bowl, right? But I, I need a lid. And, of course, a lot of you are not surprised that I tried to fashion a lid. And don't you judge me, because how many of you put, like, a plastic thing over it then a plate on top? Hey, y'all deserve a slow clap. Yeah, that's a slow clap right there, right? And I'm like, that's... And so, and guess what? That's the way it is. That, that's the way I rolled with it, right? 
And so as I was starting to get annoyed with this situation, and praise God, I didn't holler for Trish, which I normally do 99 times out of 100. Holy Spirit said, imagine the ones that don't want to put a lid on it. Now, I love moments like this, Brother Matt, because Holy Spirit gives us a word, right? But in the title, you could read so far into this because that's what I did. But then Holy Spirit says, let me explain when I say put a lid on it. Amen? So this is what the, the, the foundational scripture comes from. So you know how Holy Spirit was teaching me. Say his name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. He's the only teacher. Amen? Amen? So when we worship God, Holy Spirit will teach us, reveal to us, change us. Hear my heart as a pastor, preacher, minister, what you want to call me. We are one. God loves me just as much as he loves you, and we have the same gifts. Amen. We have the same anointing. Amen. Amen. I say it all the time, and some of you need to hear it. Some of y'all could do a gooder job than I can up here. And guess what? If that's the desires of your heart, and that's what you're asking the Lord, he will bless you in your due season, in your time. But all I'm asking from you is don't allow your ambitions or don't allow religion to, to, to hinder what Holy Spirit wants to do to you today. God wants to flow through you and bless you with a fresh anointing. Amen? And so when I say put a lid on it, this is where it comes from. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover him with favor as with a shield. Can I get an amen? amen. Say it with me. Bless me, O Lord. How many of you ask God to bless you? Amen? Amen? Some of y'all need to hear this because I hear this quite often and I rebuke it. I hear this quite often and I rebuke it. Well, I don't want to I don't I don't want to ask the Lord for blessings cuz he already done blessed me. You know how you change that person's mind? Well, I declare in Jesus name all the blessings he has in store for you come to my house in Jesus name. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, me, Craig. I want my blessings. You see, let, let, let's not try to test God, right? There's this false humility. Ooh, I just hit puberty on that one. That's a good word then, Brother Ryan, when, you, when the voice cracks like that. We all, we all can have this false humility, but then when the time comes, we get into religion or what we call tradition with God, and we're not asking God, and God said, ask. Did Father God not, ask, not, not say ask in Matthew 7? Ask, seek, and knock, right? He said, ask. Amen? How many of you tonight will start asking? Amen? Hallelujah. Now look at what I'm going to do, because I need it. Lord, Father, in Jesus' name, if they don't want to ask for their blessings, I take my spiritual hand, and I'll take all the blessings Lord Jesus Christ paid for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There ain't nothing there. You all took your blessings. Ain't nothing. <laughs> Y'all took your blood. <laughs> hey, you, ain't you ain't touching mine. You move on. You ain't touching mine. Amen. Say it with me. Put a lid on it. All right. So when we understand put a lid on it, we know that God is love. Amen. And we discussed this uh, for qu quite some time, I believe for like the past couple months. However, Holy Spirit puts it all together here in 1 John 4. And this is what we're going to read. We're going to read a few scriptures from here. Beloved, say with me, that's me. Beloved, me. beloved, me. hallelujah. You see, you could either, you could either want to be loved or you are loved. Amen. amen. Are you beloved or do you want to be loved? That's two different things, amen. And we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Let us love one another for love is from God and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God. Because God is love. Say it with me, God is, love. God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. Say it with me, through him. through him. In this love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. Amen? Amen. Beloved? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. 
No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. Amen. Amen. I believe with all my heart for the past few years, that's what we as God's beloved children continuously fight here. Can I get an amen? amen? Look at how God is adding to us. Hallelujah. Seriously, I hugged a brother back there holding that beloved little angel. Say hi to him. Brother Allen, can you wave at us? Everybody say hi, Allen. Hi, beloved. I'll tell you right now, we hugged each other. And we hugged each other. And we, I'll tell you right now, we cried. And right when we broke the hug, he said, I want to be a member at Open Arms Community Church. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then, this is what's so beautiful about, say it with me, agape. agape. This is what's so beautiful about the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, his perfect love. He looks right in my eyes and he says, Holy Spirit's here. Hallelujah. Now, here in my heart, for the past few years, you guys know, we've been up and down, right? I mean, there were times that it was, it, it just broke God's heart that only a few would be here, right? But, of course, we're in the season now where you know the Lord's coming back, and, and now all his people, right, are coming back. Amen? We have to fight to make sure that we bless Holy Spirit. This is his house. Which means, family, that if you have Jesus Christ as Lord, we have to cast aside all of the cares and the worries of this world, all of the emotions, all of the obligations, all of whatever thing that you think that you're doing. That we got to lay it aside and we have to come into this place and say, Lord Jesus, it's all about you and I want to bless you and I'm going to be a blessing to my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. And I promise you, his glory will bless you and your family. But if you choose to come in here and be a wolf, it's a choice. And if you choose to come in here and bring harm to God's people and speak against his anointed, listen, it ain't me or it ain't your brothers and sisters. God promises you have another thing coming. I don't want that for you. Amen? I don't want that for your family. I want your family to be blessed. And this is what I'm telling people. Put a lid on it. Amen. Can you say that with me? Put a lid on it. Put a lid on it. Some of y'all look at me like, I can't believe this preacher titled this sermon, Put a Lid on It. <laughs> but you know what? It's okay. Because you know why? Holy Spirit wanted this word. And I'm just going to be obedient and deliver the word. Amen? Amen. When you have his love, when you know God is love, you know that love is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And say this with me, in him. Amen. In 1 John 2, 24 says this, as for you, say with me, that's me. Amen. As for you, Amen. thank you, <laughs> thank you, brother Ribeye. As for you, Amen. let what you have heard from the beginning. Oh, my goodness. Now hear my heart, when the word says from the beginning, we have to understand, glory be to God, beloved Jim, we have to understand in the beginning, Holy Spirit hovered and he was waiting on God's word. Right? When God's word said, let there be light, Holy Spirit said, amen. 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 Come on, family, you can't make this up. This is the word of God. Come on now, Holy Spirit. Say his name, Holy Spirit, teach. I done broke my, 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 I done broke all my toys up here. Trying to be. In the beginning, all right, Holy Spirit hovered the darkness. God spoke, let there be light, and there was light. Amen. And, it's, and this is what God has to say. From the beginning, remain in you. If it does, you will also remain in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he himself made to us. Say it with me, eternal life. eternal life. Who is in you? Amen. Amen. So when you say that Jesus Christ is in you, that I am in Jesus Christ, you're saying that the one that provided the light, hallelujah, because remember, John the Baptist said, the light is here. The light is walking among us. How powerful is that? I know there's many of you 
that, that would worship and go back to that time and be like, oh, my goodness. You know, to be one of the disciples. And guess what? We got it gooder now because we're children. We're his sons and daughters. We got it gooder now. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We got it gooder now because we're his. Hallelujah. He's in us. Amen. But here, here in my heart, it's still okay. It's still okay to, to, to be in worship and to talk to the Lord and say, you know what? I wonder what that would be like to be, to be a disciple, right? I wonder what it would be like to, <laughs> right? I wonder what it would be like to walk with Jesus, right? You know, it's funny because I, I, I believe that we all have a really cool relationship with God. And I love hearing, you know, my, from my brothers, amen, my sisters, their relationship with the Lord, amen. I love hearing as far as, so what do you do when you wake up, you know? Oh, I just thank him. You know, some of us get on our knees, right? Some of us, you know, we, we go for walks, hallelujah. Pastor does that a lot, Pastor John does that a lot, right? But I love it because we all do what we do to bless him. And the beauty is, is that all God wants you to do is do it at your best. Does that make sense? What I'm, what I'm trying to say is that if, if, if it's making crafts, then you better do your best crafts Amen. in the presence of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If it's working out, you best work out really good. Right? In the, if it's running, you better run your heart out. Can I get it? Right? If it's teaching God's children, I mean, I love it. I love it because Sis Debs, she said, oh, my goodness. She goes, look at, and I looked at her papers, and my goodness, it's like the book of Deborah was written down. And she's like, look at all this that I had. And she was trembling. And I said, that's all Holy Spirit flowing through you. Amen? Amen. You got to do it. If you do it, my point is, if you do it at your best in how you worship God, he honors that because you made him first. Amen. Amen? You made him first. If it's praise and worship, come on, it's just not another song. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? You heard our beloved brother on Wednesday night. Oh, it shattered a lot of us. Amen? He shared his heart, and it was all Holy Spirit. And I'll say it again here in this message. You know, he was, he was fixing to just put it down and be like, you know what, let's just go study. But the, but the beauty of agape, the beauty of the anointing of Holy Spirit is God will encourage you. Amen. If you have a relationship with God, God will say, don't worry about what people say about you. Amen. Don't worry about what the cliques are doing. You worry about me. Amen. And glory to God, he pushed through. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved Sonia sang her heart out like they always do, right? Ask Sister Tish. Sister Tish, where you at? Right? Ask Sister Tish. As a praise and worship leader, as a pastor for the youth, right? You can imagine the things that tries to come against her, and it's easier for easy. Sis, is it not easy for you to say, we're just not going to do it? And if you don't mind me asking, how many times does that happen? Where the enemy is trying to tell you, don't do it, just stop. And pl thank God for that, that confession. Because I believe with all my heart, as brothers and sisters, we need to hear that. Because the battle is real. But see, some people come in and they're like, well, there's Tish. There's the praise and worship team. All right, well, I really don't really care for this song. Oh, my goodness. Am I going to get the carne asada today and the guacamole? How dare we? But yet I'm the bad guy when I check you on it. All of a sudden, you're mad at me because I'm telling you the truth, and I'm asking you right now in Jesus' name, push through. Because you are in him, and he is in you. Amen. Hallelujah. And he loves you. He loves you. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy to quit. It is. I'm going to, I'm going to confess to you. The devil has been making me want to quit this for a while, and I'm battling through it. You all need to hear this as a church body. The devil for the past three months, has been, has been tempting me to throw in the towel. I'm trying, and I need your help, and I thank God for your worship life. I thank God for all the text messages. I thank God when I see you out, you're just, you truly are open arms. It isn't the church building, it's God in you, amen? 
But hear me. The world is evil, and the devil wants you to look at the evil, look at the distractions, look at the haters. Say it with me, no more. We look at Jesus and we continue to walk this walk that God has set before us. Hallelujah. Because as you walk this walk, I'll tell you right now, the glory of God will fill you and fill your house and bless your children and heal your house. How many of us need healing right now? Hallelujah. Lord, heal us. Because God said if you repent, if you humble yourself, right? Beloved Matt, Missy, I'm so proud of you guys. I'm so proud of you guys. All it took was for us to, to talk over the phone and worship God. And in Jesus' name, you cut everything off. Everything that the devil wanted to do to hurt you. The people that he wanted you to come against and them coming against. It's all squashed in Jesus' name. And look, look, you're here and we love you. Amen. Say with me, I love you, Brother Matt. Say with me, I love you, Sister Missy. In Jesus' name, Amen. But this talk is real because you see in his picture, it's been up on the screen for some time now. Listen, if you're the Christian going, well, if they really love me, they should have checked on me. Really? Really? Listen, if you have that heart right now, look at this screen. Listen, Linda, look. Does it really come down to that? Because a pastor didn't, didn't come and cover your boo-boos or, or do something, or I wasn't there when you wanted me to be there and I came late, and now all of a sudden you're mad at me and the entire church? Where, where's he at? Where is he at? Because if he is your Lord, guess what? You won't have that pity mindset. Because you know why? God, even though nobody check on me, you live in me. Amen. Holy Spirit, help me right now because the enemy's trying to play with my mind. Say it with me, Holy Spirit, help me. Spirit. A lot of reasons why we don't get help from Holy Spirit, we don't ask him. We're too busy to be quick to get mad at. Come on now. That's dead and gone in Jesus' name, amen. amen. You all really want to worship Lord Jesus? Then put a lid on it. Yeah. Say it with me, discipleship. discipleship. Therefore, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In agape, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. In Jesus' name, this is all I have been doing. In Jesus' name, this is all I have been doing in my worship and how Holy Spirit speaks through me since I've got here to be blessed to be here at Open Arms Community Church. That, that the only two commandments is love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. There's only two. And the second one is love everybody. Say it with me, everybody. Like you love yourself. So the question I have for you is, can you love somebody if you hate yourself? Are you following the commandments if you hate yourself? Are you following the commandments if you're condemning yourself? My question is, how do you call yourself a Christian if you can't even look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am a beloved child of God. I am forgiven. I am washed clean. I am sanctified. I had a beloved. Oh, bless me. I'm going to say your name, Brother Gary. I normally don't, but Brother Gary, Holy Spirit said to say your name, Brother Gary. So I'm going to say it, Brother Gary. <laughs> Amen, Brother Gary. Brother Gary, thank you. And Brother Gary said, and I love the text he sent me. He asked me, he says, what's righteousness? Isn't that amazing? And Brother, G Br Brother Gary will testify. Man, I love you, bro. I love you, sis. All I can text him, Holy Spirit told me to text him, Jesus Christ is Lord equals righteousness. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And the beauty is, is that you could just feel Holy Spirit on the phone and how God was just overflowing in his heart and in his mind and the way he just started texting me. But isn't it just like the devil to have you look at yourself and say, look at you, you messed up today. 
look at you. Let me ask you something. Is that not the devil's voice when he says, look at you? How many of you can testify that's how the devil's voice is, right? Look at you. You messed up. May I confess to you, I, I allowed that garbage demon to bother me for years. And Holy Spirit said, the next time he said, it took years because I finally repented and asked, I asked God for help. And Holy Spirit said, next time you hear the devil say, look at you, you say, look at Jesus. I promise you, he'll shut up. <laughs> I promise you, he'll, he'll, he'll be on mute real quick. Amen. Say it with me, in him. in him. Praise God. When you're in Christ and Christ is in you, this is the anointing of his Holy Spirit, his resurrection. And the power of his resurrection, the power of Holy Spirit is he will teach you everything. You see, I love moments like this because, yes, praise God, we are in Holy Spirit's church and we have a lot of things going on, right? We have a ministry that we have actually a lot of ministries in the church that reach out right? And here in my heart, on Wednesday nights, there's a young adult ministry, and, and if you're, what's the age range again? 18 to 55. And I love that. Praise God, Brother Ryan. That's the heart of it. We won't turn anybody down, and they won't. They won't. They won't. You won't go in there and be like, you're too old. They're like, oh, golly. What's the name of this building again? You know what I mean? <laughs> Open arms sound like closed doors. You know, <laughs> they, they will welcome you. But, you know, that ministry has been on fire and it will continue to be on fire. Why? Because it's a bunch of people that just want to come as they are, share Jesus, and just get to real talk about life. Right? To allow Holy Spirit, say his name, Holy Spirit, to allow Holy Spirit to flow in your life, in your marriage, in your children. Can I get an amen? I'm grateful because... The, the elders that lead it, they live the model Christian life as far as how to show agape. Isn't that beautiful? They have the fruit, say it with me, fruits of Holy Spirit. Amen? Can you hear an amen? amen? I mean, I ain't going to look for oranges at a strawberry patch, right? You would tell me, brother, you're in the wrong place. So here in my heart, if you're looking for religion, if you're looking, you know, to be crunchy, you don't, go, don't go in there. Right? But if you're looking to just flow, hallelujah, do that. Amen. We have to learn to, to, to go and preach God's word. But here in my heart, uh, preaching God's word is not a matter of having your Bible with you and saying, hey, yeah, you know what? I noticed you don't look right. Come over here. Let me talk to you real quick. You know? And then she, you don't Bible thump nobody. Preaching God's word is just how you live life. I, I, glory to God, there's many of you that got that, but then there's some of you that's like, huh? What? Whatever you decide to do today, Lord willing, church is done, you go and have food. The way that you carry yourself is preaching. The way that you speak to your wife, you're preaching. Wives, the way you speak to your husband... You're preaching, Amen. right? And guess what? The souls that are around you that are listening and observing, if they catch on to what you're doing, you just made a disciple. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me ask you something. Did you get up and preach? No? Were you in a church building? We're just living our gooder and gooder life. Hallelujah. And as you live the gooder and gooder life, this is what Holy Spirit wants. Say it with me, overflow. God Almighty wants you to overflow in his love that abounds within you. God Almighty wants you to overflow in the life that you speak. Here in my heart, sometimes it's hard to speak life and victory when you're going through a season. Right? Because the enemy, right, Sister Missy, wants you to just shut up. That's what the devil wants you to do. You know why? The sword of faith is released from the holy of holies out of your voice. And God has given you the authority in Christ to speak the blessings, to speak your future. Hallelujah. If you're single and you want that partner in life, don't be quiet about it. 
Don't be quiet about it. You be cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and you thank God. I don't care if you're in the factory. Thank you, Lord. You got my wife that you made. And hallelujah, she's looking for me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you got my husband, a son that fears you, that knows how to treat me right as your daughter. And Father God, he is right here in Jesus' name. Hear my heart, family. You got to speak this life into your life so that you can manifest the blessings of God, his promises. Amen. But hear me now, family. The way this devil works is, well, let me just put this on social media, what I want. And what do you do? You just send an alarm for all the demons. And next thing you know, you got people hitting you up that God never intended to hit you up. Right? Listen, Holy Spirit just put that on my heart. We got a lot of singles right now that are hurting. And you guys have been on my heart. And I'm encouraging the singles to get each other's numbers, to, to talk, to communicate, not to hook people up. Hear my heart. You guys. Pastor Joey is running a dating service. No. Will you stop? Boys, you know, boys, you have your own thing. I have to make this clear now these days. Boys, right? Women, you, you guys talk and encourage each other, right? Because hear my heart, singles. Is it not true that... A married person can't really counsel to you all because they don't know what you're going through. Right? And I just, I just ask, if, if, if you have single friends or even if you're single coming here to church, come see me. Because I know, I know a lot of people and I'll make sure that, you know, we start coming together to love on you. And, and we can minister one another. Amen? Amen? Say with me, disciple. disciple. You see, the Apostle Paul, I love it because his heart was, I wish you could be like me. I wish you could be like me where you don't have to find somebody because I'm intimate with God and I want that for everybody. But then the Apostle Paul also said, because you're struggling with some things and you're, you're lusting, it's better that you get married, right? But here in my heart, I just want you guys to know that God is a God of intimacy, whether you're single or married. And he wants you to be intimate with him. Amen? Say it with me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. This is love. Say it with me. Love. love. And surely I am with you forever. Amen? And this is discipleship. Hallelujah. And in this discipleship, you could be loved, like I said, but remember, Lord Jesus Christ on that cross felt distant from the Father. Amen? Where's Brother PJ going? You got an emergency call? Amen, fire. Let's all pray for Brother PJ and, and the fire service right now. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for going before your beloved son PJ and all the firemen and all the workers, Father God, that is going out to, to this home or this, this place of where, where the enemy is hoping to do his work. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, Father God, we bind them up right now. And Father God, we just plead your blood, Lord Jesus Christ, over all of those, Father, that is doing, doing your work in just helping the community. And, and trying to restore power to houses, Father God, and trying to bless all these families, Father. We lift up the families to you right now, Heavenly Father, and we plead your blood, Lord Jesus Christ, once again, thanking you for your blood, Father, in Jesus' name. And all God's beloved said, amen. 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 God bless you guys. Hallelujah. So you could be loved, and remember, the Lord Jesus Christ was loved on that cross, but he was distant from the Father, or you could be loved and be discipled. Amen? amen. Say it with me, put a lid on it. So Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we talked about love, we talked about the impartation, and we talked about discipleship, amen? And this is what lid means. To have this love in your life, to have the love imparted in you, that your mind is always focused on loving. Listen, family, we're getting too spoiled in this fallen evil world where we want to share our opinions even if it breaks somebody down and hurts people. Can we change that into love? I don't know about you, but I am, right? I pray that you would. I mean, it's, we're so quick to say, oh, man, the food there is garbage, right? I mean, and here in my heart, people say, well, I have opinion to my... You do. But my point is, is that is it worth it? 
Is it worth your anointing being hurt? Is it worth you fueling the fire of always being right or judgmental? You see, that's how personal God can be with you. Some people tell me all the time, well, I've always been this way. Is it pleasing to God? You see what I'm saying? Because if it's not pleasing to God, then does God not give us a choice to start making change? And do we want to make change? Amen? Amen? Because it's amazing to me because we tend to say that, God, we want change, but we do the same thing. That is insanity, right? If we don't change any of the variables, it's always going to be the same. But God is saying, make a change, my child, amen? Sometimes a change may be, Brother Matt, they did me wrong, everybody was wrong, but you know what? I'm going to love everybody and say, I forgive you. Some of y'all look at me, are you crazy? Well, guess what did Lord Jesus Christ do on that cross? He was 100% right, but then died our death. Say it with me, put a lid on it. Because if we choose that we fight to keep that love inside of us, then guess what? Holy Spirit, say his name. Holy Spirit will disciple you. Holy Spirit will teach you, guide you, lead you. Holy Spirit will change you. You may think your marriage is gooder. Listen, I'm surrounded by I'm surrounded by saints that tell me all the time, my goodness, brother, just when I think it's as good as it gets, it just gets gooder. You know why? It's his presence. Hallelujah. It's his presence flowing through you. And don't you want God to just keep on flowing? How many, how many of you would agree with me? And then we're going to close. Praise God. I know we went a little long today, but it doesn't matter. Amen. Stay with me. It don't matter. We're on his time. Amen. I'm done looking at time. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Half of you are mad at me because I stopped looking at the watch. It's, it's all right. We got an altar call coming. You can give that to the Lord Jesus. Amen. There's nothing left for Lord Jesus Christ to do for us. His spirit is here and his spirit is living in, in, in those of you who called on his name. His spirit is perfect and has all the power. And once again, where is his spirit living? So hear my heart. For those of you who hear this word and you hear it as condemnation... It's the devil trying to mess with you. And glory be to God, we're going to have an altar call. Come to this altar and leave it at this altar. Because this is a word of encouragement. You don't have to be the same. You can keep on moving forward. Amen. How many of you will testify? It's good, good. Give God praise for that. Hallelujah. You can keep moving forward. How many of you will testify that when you went through the season, because I've been through it, I'm going to pick on myself. When I've been through the season where I allowed victim mentality to settle in and I allowed the devil to start telling me, oh, they're talking about you. They don't like you. They're trying to run you off. They, look, you talk to that. And I start having those conversations. I wanted to lock myself in the room. Testify. Lord Jesus right here. I see the hands going up. Amen. But say with me, beloved children of God, but God. but God. We're here right now. Amen. And Father God says, thank you for your boldness and saying, it's crucified now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Amen. God is, will, and always will for eternity bless you. His righteousness, Lord Jesus Christ, lives in you, and that is the impartation. Amen. His love is the impartation in you, and you are covered with favor as with the shield. Remember, the shield, if we go to Ephesians 6, that's the shield of faith, amen? That, that shield of faith that protects us, his name is Lord Jesus Christ, amen? So at any point where you feel that something's coming against you or you feel alone, hear my heart. There was no one ever more alone than our precious Lord Jesus who hung on that cross for you and me, and hear my heart. All Lord Jesus is asking you to do is call upon his spirit. 
Activate the love that is inside of you. Amen. And say it with me. Put a lid on it. Hallelujah. Come to the altar. Amen.